Hey guys, right before I get into this video, I want to tell you guys about the huge $200 giveaway I'm doing to kick off the start of my second channel, PA Media. There's three things that you have to do to enter. First, you have to subscribe to both of my channels and turn on notifications. Then go ahead and like this video. And lastly, click the first link in the description down below to enter this giveaway. There's several entries and you can also come back every day for daily bonus entries. So yeah guys, this giveaway ends on July 1st. Make sure you guys enter and let's get right into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Past the Meeting and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the 8 most annoying types of players in Clash of Clans. Now with all these types of videos, I do not mean to offend any specific player. This is more of a general thing like these types of players rather than this specific player that I want to like shame them or something like that. That's not my goal with this video. So yeah, I hope I don't offend anyone. But anyways, let's get right into these things. But before I do, make sure you guys do go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for all the latest Clash of Clans up updates, news, and leaks, and you also turn on my post notifications for all my latest uploads. Alright guys, let's go and get right into this list. Starting off with number one, this is the guy who only does one clan game challenge to get all the rewards. Now this guy is super annoying because there's some people who actually work really hard you know, to stack up clan games points. They're getting the 3,000, 4,000 points every single clan games. And you know, they're actually doing the challenges. Then there's this player who does like one, like 100 point challenge just to mooch off all the rewards. They don't really like do anything else besides just that one challenge. And I think the problem with this is that Supercell needs to change it somehow so that they reward players who get more points in the clan games. Right now, like I said, you can just do a single challenge and you'll be rated the same as that guy who did 4,000 points. I don't think that's fair, and I think it would definitely make a lot more sense if Supercell were maybe to have tiered rewards, where the more points you contribute, the more tier rewards that you can get to. Alright, moving on to number two, this is the guy who only requests, but never donates. Oh my goodness, I have had so many personal experiences with this type of person. They're requesting constantly, like every 30 minutes, they'll put out a request saying like, I don't know, bowlers or something. And you know, it's not that bad if it's like barbs or archers, I can like cook them up pretty quick, right? But they're asking for these big troops like golems, like bowlers, witches, and all this stuff that I actually have to spend like resources and time to cook. They just keep asking for them. And the worst part is they don't contribute back. They just keep requesting, keep getting all my stuff, and then they don't donate back. You know, I'm there requesting for a hound or something for my war attack. They just pretend they don't even see the request. They just, you know, I don't know. It's so annoying. And honestly, you guys should try to donate to your clanmates as much as possible. Uh, you know, because you're a clan. You're supposed to help each other out. You don't join a clan just to get the rewards from everyone else. All right, let's move on to number three. This is the person who begs for elder or co-leader. Now, this is less common in my clan where we have to like filter applicants and all that stuff. But if you're just running up your own clan and this guy joins, he automatically like asks for elder or co or something like that. It's just super annoying because these positions are supposed to be earned. You know, you're supposed to do a very good job and then you get elder. And then if you do a very, very, very good job, you might be able to get co-leader. These people who say, hey, can I get free elder or something like that? They just don't understand the value of a clan leadership. They don't realize that elder and co-leader are positions that you have to actually prove yourself for. Um, so yeah, just super annoying and these guys like just spam up the whole chat with this nonsense. All right, number four on this list is the person who hops clans a lot. This is the person who joins your clan and says, all right guys, I'm joining this clan now, all right, great. And then like two days later, he says, hey, I need to visit my friend's clan or something like that, right? He leaves the clan, he just keeps hopping around and then like a week later, he comes back, does maybe one war and then he just hops again. Like this type of person who has like three clans to visit, uh, it's just super annoying because if you join a clan, I expect you to be committed to that clan. Like if you join my clan, past used by, I don't want you like hopping around everywhere. You know, if you're gonna join, join. And if you have another account that you want to hop around with, uh, then go ahead and do that, but just don't do it with past used by. It's super annoying because first of all, it doesn't really show their commitment to our clan. And second of all, if they keep hopping around, it means they won't be able to do things like wars. They'll miss out of clan games. And probably the most important part is if you're in an invite only clan or a closed clan and they want to join back, it's a huge hassle like opening up the clan or like inviting them back or something like that. Someone has to be online for all this stuff. Obviously not the easiest thing to do at all times. So yeah, guys, please 
please just do not be this clan hopper. All right, let's move on to the next person, number five. This is the guy who always donates the wrong troops or doesn't donate max troops when you need them. So, I mean, I get it. Maybe one time you miss a request, the guy asks for a poison spell, you accidentally donate a haste spell. Like, I get that every once in a while mistakes happen. But this is the person who constantly donates the wrong troops. If I'm asking for like a lava hound, they give me like giants or something. And it's just so annoying because if I'm asking for a troop, I want that troop. Now this is even more important in the war clan castles when first of all you need max troops and second of all if the person requests for something it's usually best to give them what they want in a war clan castle. Now there's some people who think they're helping but they're really not when they donate these non max troops they're donating like level 4 dragons and stuff like that like yeah you're trying to help but please don't because we need the max troops in the war CC we're going up against clans out there we're going to be attacking our bases and the best way to defend is is to have max troops in our clan castles. All right, number six on this list is the person who always forgets their war attacks, but then they always have excuses for missing them. So first of all, you should never miss war attacks, period. It's annoying enough when someone doesn't show up to do their attacks and we end up losing the war because of that. But what makes it even worse is when this is a constant or frequent behavior, like they're missing like every other war or something like that, and they always have excuses for it. Oh, this one time I was too busy, this other time I didn't have Wi-Fi, you know, stuff like that. They always have these excuses and it's just really not fair to the rest of the clan. We're trying to win a war out there, this guy just does not show show up and this is something that happens consistently obviously i'm not a happy camper here and it's definitely very annoying all right number seven is the guy who forgets to change their war base now what i mean by that is when someone new joins our clan we take a look at their war base right the first war that they go into we make sure that their base is legit that it's like fine it's not some like random farming base and then sometimes if their base is not fine we let them know hey you should change your war base we can offer you a few bases if you need it and it's really annoying when they don't don't get the message or they just refuse to change their base. This has happened quite a few times with my clan where some high level player joins our clan it's really important for them to have a good base design in war. We tell them hey your base probably is going to get 3 starred in the first try it's just not that good or something and they just either ignore it they don't get the message I don't really know what goes on but in the end battle day starts they don't change their war base and it's just super annoying because now the enemy team gets a way easier 3 star on one of our bases that should have been changed. Alright guys, the last thing on this list is number 8. These are the kids on Global Chat who say I need a girlfriend. It's super annoying. Like I don't use Global Chat that much to begin with, but when I do, it's for recruiting or something like that. Not to see these little like 12 year old kids saying I need a girlfriend. It's just so ridiculous. Do you really think you can find a girlfriend from the Clash of Clans global chat of all things? Like maybe clan chat. No, I still don't think so, but maybe, maybe clan chat. Global chat, really? Really? Well, like, what are you thinking? Like, just please stop doing that. It's so annoying. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Make sure you guys do go ahead and like this video if you did enjoy it. And also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for all the latest Clash of Clans updates, news, and leaks. Make sure you guys do turn on my post notifications for all my latest uploads. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace out.